Mighty Dinosaur was a United States Air Force program to develop a space plane that could be used for a variety of military missions, including aerial reconnaissance, bombing, space rescue, satellite maintenance, and as a space interceptor to sabotage enemy satellites. The program ran from October 24, 1957 to December 10, 1963, cost 660 million US dollars, and was cancelled just after spacecraft construction had begun. Dinosaur could also reach Earth orbit, like conventional, manned space capsules. These characteristics made Dinosaur a far more advanced concept than other human spaceflight missions of the period. Research into a space plane was realized much later in other reusable spacecraft such as the 1981-2011 Space Shuttle and the more recent Boeing X-40 and X-37B spacecraft. The idea would be to use the vehicle's wings to generate lift and pull up into a new ballistic trajectory, exiting the atmosphere again and giving the vehicle time to cool off between the skips. These studies all proposed various rocket-powered vehicles that could travel vast distances by gliding after being boosted to high speed and altitude by a rocket stage. The rocket booster would place the vehicle onto a suborbital, but exo-atmospheric, trajectory, resulting in a brief spaceflight followed by re-entry into the atmosphere. Days after the launch of Sputnik 1 on the 4th of October 1957, on either October 10th or October 24th, the USAF Air Research and Development Command consolidated Hayward's, Brass Bell, and Robo studies into the Dinosaur Project, or Weapon System 464 liters, with a three-step abbreviated development plan. The proposal drew together the existing boost glide proposals into a single vehicle designed to carry out all the bombing and reconnaissance tasks examined by the earlier studies, and would act as successor to the X-15 research program. The three stages of the dinosaur program were to be a research vehicle, a reconnaissance vehicle, and a vehicle that added strategic bombing capability. The first glide tests for Dinosaur I were expected to be carried out in 1963, followed by powered flights, reaching Mach 18, the following year. In March 1958, nine U.S. aerospace companies tendered for the Dinosaur contract. In late 1961, the Titan III was chosen as the launch vehicle. The overall design of the X-20 Dinosaur was outlined in March 1960. Due to changing requirements, several versions of the Dinosaur were considered, all sharing the same basic shape and layout. The Dinosaur was projected to be able to use this capability to rendezvous with satellites even if the target conducted evasive maneuvers. Unlike the later Space Shuttle, Dinosaur did not have wheels on its tricycle undercarriage, as rubber tires would have caught fire during re-entry. On September 19, 1962, Albert Cruz was added to the Dinosaur program and the names of the six remaining Dinosaur astronauts were announced to the public. By the end of 1962, Dinosaur had been designated X-20, the booster successfully fired, and the USAF had held an unveiling ceremony for the X-20 in Las Vegas. Boeing B-52 C-40B Ostrato Fortress 53-0399 was assigned to the program for air dropping the X-20, similar to the X-15 launch profile. Besides the funding issues that often accompany research efforts, the Dinosaur program suffered from two major problems, uncertainty over the booster to be used to send the craft into orbit, and a lack of a clear goal for the project. Many different boosters were proposed to launch Dinosaur into orbit. The Titan II and Titan III boosters could launch Dinosaur into Earth orbit, as could the Saturn C1, and all were proposed with various upper stage and booster combinations. The original intention for Dinosaur, outlined in the Weapon System 464 liters proposal, called for a project combining aeronautical research with weapon system development. Many questioned whether the USAF should have a crewed space program, when that was the primary domain of NASA. It was frequently emphasized by the Air Force that, unlike the NASA programs, Dinosaur allowed for controlled re-entry, and this was where the main effort in the X-20 program was placed. On January 19, 1963, 
the Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, directed the U.S. Air Force to undertake a study to determine whether Gemini or Dinosaur was the more feasible approach to a space-based weapon system. This was seen as a reversal of the Secretary's earlier position on the Dinosaur program. Dinosaur was also an expensive program that would not launch a crewed mission until the mid-1960s at the earliest. This high cost and questionable utility made it difficult for the U.S. Air Force to justify the program. Eventually, the X-20 Dinosaur program was cancelled on December 10, 1963. On the day that X-20 was cancelled, the U.S. Air Force announced another program, the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, a spin-off of Gemini. Another black program, Ising Glass, which was to be air-launched from a B-52 bomber, was evaluated and some engine work done, but it too was eventually cancelled. The later, and much smaller Soviet Borofova was closer in design philosophy to the dinosaur, while NASA's Martin the 10th 23 Prime and Martin Marietta X-24 AHL-10 research aircraft also explored aspects of suborbital and space flight. In 1962, the fifth book in Donald A. Wolheim's Mike Mars series, Mike Mars Flies the Dinosaur, had the title character fly an emergency rescue mission in the dinosaur. John Berryman's 1963 short story The Trouble with Telstar featured a dinosaur being used to intercept communications satellites for repair. The 1969 Hollywood film drama Marooned featured a rescue craft modeled somewhat after the dinosaur being hurriedly deployed to rescue astronauts aboard a crippled Apollo command capsule.